Hello, everybody. Welcome to a an extra spicy hmm, uh, edition of a pop up live tonight here from the workshop in the north of Somerset. A uh, bit of a chilly evening tonight. Probably not the best night to wear a t shirt, but hey ho, there we go. And we are talking. We're going to do a pop up live tonight to look at some fabulous little Dune model kits that have been sent to us by Jadlam down in Glastonbury. And we have three of them. These are kind of, I don't know describe them, not simplified, but they are simplified. They're, they're more kind of snapped together kits, really. So we have the uh, House Atreides Ornithopter. And if you've ever seen the films or read the books indeed these have flappy wings uh, they're like giant butterflies um, we also have the house harkonnen ornithopters which are slightly more brutish looking as befits the uh, the house harkonnen and we also have a spice harvester as well and as you can tell from all three of them, there look to be extraordinary uh, um, opportunities to do some quite lovely weathering on them, especially the Spice Harvester. And I think that box art does give you plenty of ideas for dust effects and things. So... Anyway, shall we crack on with some building? But before we do that, I want to introduce you to a couple of new friends of mine here, courtesy of our friends in Australia. And they are the scale models supply, scale modelers supply rather, in Australia. And they rather kindly. Uh, the other week sent us some of their new nippers, um, which it was extraordinarily um, generous of them. And uh, we're going to kind of blood them tonight, hopefully not literally, but you know what I mean. Um, and uh, yeah, so what we've got here, we've got uh, two different types. We've got the dual edged nippers, which kind of operate by kind of bringing um you know bringing the uh parts together and then um you know squeezing them to um to get the uh you know to get the cut and then you've got the single edge ones a bit like my beloved the spy nippers and my god hand ones and these work by bringing the blade across but then you've got a, like a blunt edge so it works in like a, a guillotining uh action um and yeah it it kind of um what's the best way of describing it um yeah it, it you get a much 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 need to cut that way um so a big shout to uh sms in australia for sending them sending us these they also sent through which i'm hoping to put to use tonight is their ceramic scraper now, i've never used one of these i was talking to drew about it and he said oh they're they're very good so um yeah we've got one of them tonight so i'm just going to have a quick look at the comments <coughs> excuse me i'm going to have a quick look at the comments and have a quick sip of barley cup so cheers me dude um here we go. Uh, um, uh, Dougal McWoogle says, on a Tuesday, I know, unbelievable. Um, it's because we've got because uh, we've got new things to talk about. And so, um, you know, I decided that uh, we do a pop up live and let's have a look at some other comments. Um, Jim Aldcott says, what's all this then? That's a bonus episode, folks. Um um and nick brown says excellent top up to imc very kind of you nick um so yes uh just reading through jim says it's quite chilly here in chicago yeah, it's freezing here but i'm wearing a a t-shirt obs and um crazy loca says howdy everyone um uh, jim Aldcott says uh, good stuff make some great paint as well 
Um, Crazy Locust says, what scale are these dune kits? Well, they appear to be a, a kind of free scale. Um, I'm just having a look at the boxes here. There's, I can't see that there is a scale uh, listed on there. They do, men are doing a 72nd scale ornithopter, and we'll come to that, um, uh, come to that at the end of the show. But it just says this is a mini sized replica of the sci fi looking Harkland ornithopter in the film June. So, no actual, no actual scale as far as I can say. And, um, uh, Jim, yeah, Jim's got it like a box scale and, um, and Brian says, uh, better than football. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just for me after what happened at the weekend. But never mind. Um, but yeah, that's just... Uh, bum, 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 bum. So, shall we make a model? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the uh, Atreides... Uh, ornithopter and I'm just going to ping it down to the workshop camera there we go and we did put up some images of this this evening um, he says desperately trying to find the images in uh, StreamYard um, oh, for goodness sake they haven't come through Do you can tell this is live folks um, <laughs> um, uh, right, here we go. I'm just going to bring the images up. Um, bear with, bear with, bear with, as we say. Um, oh, for goodness sake, it's brought up the wrong images. Here we go. Goodness me. I've already been doing this for four years, four or five years now. I'm almost getting it right now. So here we go. Ornithopter, and as you can see, uh, you'll see as we're doing the live tonight, it's it's small, it's tiny, but the be the detail is absolutely beautiful on this, and um, that's the main body with the with the wings on this. Uh, you can build this model with wings extended or wings folded. So, seeing as we've got the two houses here, we've got House of Trades and House Harkonnen. I think I'll do House of Trades um, folded, and I think I'll do House Harkonnen uh, fully extended. Um, but yeah, it's it's Meng, so you know that the the molding quality is going to be kind of top dollar. Um, and there is a stand provided should you wish to use it, and a little decal sheet, which does give you the glass areas. So, um, uh, so, yep, there we go. So, shall we? We're going to do the House of Khan, uh, House Harkonnen, rather, not the House of Trades one. So, now I have already had this out of the box, so I can take some photographs. There's a little decal sheet. And there is our spread of parts, and as you can as you can see, it's quite quite dainty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so we will be using uh, the single edge nippers tonight. Ooh. When you can get them out of the box, and I will be tidying things up should it be needed with my ever faithful Swan Morton uh, scalpel with a 10A blade in it. So, and I will be, uh, we'll be using Tamir extra thin tonight. Um, not the quick setting. We'll, we'll use that anyway. So without further ado, let's just have a quick look at the instructions. And, yeah, as you can see, this is not going to take, uh, not going to take a long time. And also, there's the option to uh, have them uh, flying or folded. So, like I say, Harkonnen, I think we'll have them extended um, as befits their more brutish regime. 
incidentally, I haven't seen Dune Part 2 yet. I'm hoping to go to see it uh, next week at the beautiful Clevedon Curzon Cinema, which is uh, it's an absolute gem, folks. Um, I'm hoping to go with my friend Jackie because we went to see Dune when it came out three years ago. So um, anyway, enough of the chit chat. Let's build a model, shall we? So let me just get the... Um, what are we starting with? We are starting with the two fuselage halves, which are E1 and E2. So keep the comments coming in, folks, and I will try and dip in and um, and answer them uh, as we're going. Um, uh, bear with, bear with, bear with. Um, So I'm just finding something to talk about for, uh, there we go, for the later on in the show. Bum, 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 bum. Honestly, this is, this is what I'm like when I'm, um, you know, when I'm doing stuff uh, on my own in here. I, I, I'm all over the place. Um, those, of you, those of you who know me know I'm, I'm slightly all over the place. So um, uh, let me just, I'm just grabbing another image here. Um, desktop, uh, that'll do. Right. Yay. New cutters. How exciting. So, um, single edge ones as well. So that's, I'll line it up first of all, and then very gently bring it together. Now, the beauty of single edge nippers is usually you are left with a kind of minimal. I'm going to zoom in here to show you them in action. You end up with a minimal cleanup. So, probably do with adjusting these but as you can see that's there's virtually nothing to um, nothing to kind of scrape down there that's absolutely stellar now these are quite chunky um, location locating pins like I say this is more aimed at the general market so we'll do a quick test here and we'll push them together. Oh, that takes a bit of force to do that. But there we go. We are, you can see that's that's a really nice tight fit. Um, fabulous, right. Time for some barley cup. What do you do on Tuesday evening? Watch the confused man from Dudley build a June model kit live on the internet. Oh, that, yeah, exactly that. So, um, right, according to the instructions, uh, the next stage is the cockpit. And so I, I like the way Meng have laid this out. We've just we've just dispensed with the E sprue. So there it is. And um, we're on to the F sprue now. So you've got the the cockpit and the tail um, and the gun as well. So that's pretty much the entirety of the F sprue. I'm liking this. Um, so let's just uh, jump down a second. So that's again, just very gently locate the the nippers. When you've got something which is this precise, um, it's worth taking in time just to make sure that when you get the, um, when you've got the blades together, is just gently, gently does it. And there we go. What am I using to do any kind of cleanup tonight? 
guess what, folks? It's my Infini 400 um, sanding sponge. This is the one I bought two years ago. This is the one that I'm still using. And as you can see, let me just uh, zoom in there. You can probably see the uh, the dint there from where a scalpel blade in the uh, toolbox. Um, guilty! It kind of just wedged itself in there. This is still going strong. It's I've never used a sanding sponge that is this robust. And it's got to be pointed out that I did go out and buy these. Um, we've had some sent to us by uh, premium hobbies up the road in, in Australia, um, up the road in Western Supermare. Um, and it is, honestly, folks, it's worth a, a trip over to their website to have a look at the sanding sponge and stuff they do because it's, yeah, I'm really, really impressed. Spencer um, at Telford um, uh, managed to get some, uh, get us some, uh, I hate to use the word freebies, but some samples, I think is the best way of describing it, which was a full suite of their sanding sponges, sanding sticks, holders, you name it. So thank you to Premium Hobbies. Um, and like I say, they're local to me. They're just up the road in Western Supermare. So anyway, right, let us bring this together, shall we? Um, uh, well, perhaps it helps if you put the right, the right way around. And you can see there, th these are really quite hefty um, uh, locating lugs and pins. I don't want to force it in there too much because... I don't want to have it go in there and I can't get it out before I glue this together. But that's snug. Oh, that's beautiful. Absolutely fabulous. Um, okay, what's next? Uh, the tail, I think. I'm just going to play catch up with some of the comments. Um, uh, uh, that sanding stick. Well, Jim says that sanding, that sanding stick will never, um, never die. Yeah, it, I, absolutely brilliant. Um, and uh, Andy King says, uh, infinity sanding sponges for the win. I'm trying not to do Kenneth Williams here, folks, but you know, infinity, infinity. They've all got it, infinity. Um. And Jim says, are these snap together kits? They 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 are essentially, yeah. Um, and Jared, viewer Jared, just over the hill from me, he says, nice to have a midweek show, keeping me company whilst I foil a B17 in time for the Oval show in a couple of weeks. Shout out to Genesis and Modelcraft for the tutorials. Indeed, if you've never seen uh, Jen Wright's uh, video for how she foiled um, a 48 scale p40 i believe it was the hasagawa kit it is an absolutely fabulous um kind of like inspiring tutorial on how to do something like that and jen jen being jen she just makes it look so easy um which you know it it, it isn't um it it there's, you know you, there's a lot of practice and a lot of skill goes into it but um She's just one of the most ridiculously talented modelers I know. But don't don't let her know I said that. So, um, right. Do you know what we're going to use, folks? We are going to use the seam scraper. How exciting. Because um, we do have some mould seams running across the top there. So... Now, Drew said to me, these are great, but these blades being ceramic, they can be very delicate. So, but I'm just going in there. Oh, my goodness me. I've never used these ceramic seam scrapers before. And this, this is a revelation. Encroyable. Oh, yes. I'm liking this. Th 
that is making short work of that um, those plastic seams but it's not it's weird it's kind of like it's doing the job but it's not doing it in the kind of aggressive way that a, that a metal blade would um i'm sure that that probably makes sense in some some in some weird kind of alternate universe i'm from dudley cut me some slack um but oh yes i'm i am i am sold folks this is just so we got a bit of a bit of a seam in there oh yes In other news, 56-year-old male eulogizes about tools. There we go. Um, utterly, utterly fabulous. Um, and this is just a bit of, um, I think it's called Merlon or Scotch. It, essentially, it's like Scotch Bright. It's plastic wire wool, which is always useful to go in and just do a, a final kind of tidy up. Um, but that does it really. And, uh, I'm just having a look to see, I'm making sure I've got this the right way up. No, I've got it the wrong way up. There we go. That's the right way up. So the tail goes in there like so. Oops, a daisy. Now we've got a little bit of a, a fit issue here in as much as uh, that back end is just not quite as it's not quite as snug as it needs to be not quite as precise as it needs to be just making sure i've got this the right way round yeah that's it no, oh, there we go. Well, that is utterly remarkable. That is panel line tight, that is. Oh, my goodness me. We've almost got a House Harkonnen ornithop to build here. Um, and like I say, we've got, when it comes to doing kind of gluing and, and whatnot, we've just got a tiny seam across the top there to, to deal with. Also got one on the underside. But I guess you could, you could say that if that's slightly hidden, we wouldn't worry about it too much. But I would, I would, um, I would get rid of that because I'd try to be a conscientious modeler. But there we go. Isn't that... Isn't that a fabulous design? I am preferring these to the ones in the David Lynch film, which incidentally, I absolutely adore the 1984 David Lynch film. It is absolutely barking in terms of an adaptation. Uh, and the casting is all over the place, but, and Sting in his winged underpants, obvs. But um, yeah, uh, some of the production design in in the some of the production design in the David Lynch film, I prefer his um, spice harvesters. Um, but his ornithopters, they've got kind of flappy wings, but they're they're not really flappy. So um, yeah. Anyway, shall we? Let's have another barley cup, and we'll do some uh, we'll do some uh, correspondence. I think is the best way of putting it. So let's have a look. What are you lot saying tonight? Um, uh, Jim says, frankly, Jen truly made lemonade out of lemons with the Ravel SR71 kit. Indeed, she did. Mm. Absolutely fabulous. Um, and Crazy Loka says, this is what I was wanting to see here about the ceramic scraper. I'm sold. I absolutely, um, uh, absolutely sold on it. Um, and uh, Jim, Jim says, what is the benefit of making the scraper of ceramic as opposed to steel? 
I think it's because the ceramic, although it's slightly more fragile, if you're a bit cack handed, um, I think it just doesn't blunt. Um, that's what Drew said to me anyway. So if I've got that wrong, um, Drew's model page and aim your opprobrium at him. But um, uh, and Jared says, turns out foiling is pretty easy. It's all about using the right brand of foil. I have a few meters with your name on it next time I see you, Jam. Thank you, Jared. That's very kind of you. Um, um, and and Crazy Logo says, though it seems a bit of a letdown without JM gluing his fingers together, snap fit is almost cheating. The night is young, everybody. The night is young. So um, let's move on to the next bit. Um, so let's just zoom out a sec. What, what are we doing here? We've got some, uh, I think these are weapons um, that are going on the underside here. So, well, it's the House Harkonnen. I think we can pretty much guarantee their weapons. So let's have a look. We've got, uh, well, we can finish with Sprue F. So um, so let's just make sure we don't cut the locating um, tab off. Do you know what? It's, it's, I'll also say there is something to be said for um, doing, uh, doing modeling live on the internet in as much as it actually kind of um, forces me to sit down and do something rather than me kind of vegging out in the front room in, in front of the television, which is a shocking admission, but there we go. Um, especially when, when I've, I was up at five o'clock this morning uh, doing the day job, um, which, uh, doing the day job, listening to Radio 3, folks, so, you know. Um, but yeah, you get to the evening sometimes, and especially if you've been if you've been w working in the model industry all day, there are occasions when you get to the end of the day and you think, I'd rather just read a book or something. But um, that's a shocking admission. Somebody's going to complain about that. But um, no, tonight I just thought I am so kind of enthused to try something new. And this is the thing we're always talking about on the show is. Get out of your comfort zone. I don't really don't build science fiction stuff, and as as indeed my Mandalorian uh, speeder bike probably convinced a few people I shouldn't. But um, don't mention the boots. Um, but um, yeah, it's um, get out of your comfort zone, folks. Do something that you wouldn't ordinarily do. Be prepared to make mistakes. Um, it's all part of the learning curve. In fact, I think one of the things we are going to try and do on the Int Mod Co, uh, perhaps over the summer, is one of our group builds will be out of your comfort zone group build. So I think that would be um, that would be fun. See that? Oops, Daisy. That just let's zoom out a bit. That just plugs into there like so. Brilliant. Um, um, jet scale models. This is interesting. Jet scale models says ceramic blades tend to have sharper blades than stainless steel due to their hardness. Okay. I, I'm learning something tonight. Um, Shane in Australia says, morning all soggy in Brisbane. Perfect for watching a wet man from Dudley scraping and sanding. <laughs> I'm perfectly dry, Shane. I, I, I'm not, not that kind of wet. Okay. Um, and uh, Mike Williams says, uh, oh, hello. If you haven't been onto Mike's uh, modeling page and seen the Bugatti racer he's building, it is phenomenal, especially the blue finish he's he's got on it. It's just, honestly, I saw that tonight and I was just like, oh, oh, dearie me. Right, there we go, folks. Two sprues down from the candy and we are looking for part b7 you sank my battleship there it is just there um, 
Now, these SMS nippers, I've got to say, absolutely beautiful. In fact, the cuts are so uh, precise that a lot of the time I can't actually I can't actually feel the cut taking place. But there we go. That was that was all done without any sensation of of the blades actually coming together. Um, uh, now we won't. I won't use the ceramic on that. I think we'll just a couple of swipes with the sanding sponge. Um, we have a little bit of seamage at uh, seamage mold lines to deal with there, but that'll do. And that is located in VAR. Oh, it's a searchlight. Right, okay. Yep, I'm with you. Yeah, it'll probably make more sense when I can actually go and see the film. So, um, um, uh, Jets going well. This, this, see, this is brilliant. This is what I like about having all the comments. Um, Non-marring ceramic scrapers are less likely to scratch or damage surfaces compared to metal scrapers, making them ideal for delicate surfaces like grass, glass, or ceramic tiles. Um, and Paul Adams says, uh, "Late again, evening on Paul. You'll be able to catch this, uh, watch this on catch up." Um, uh, and Mike says, thanks for the kind words. It's been a labor of love building and painting that Bugatti. Um, uh, yeah, before the end of the show, I might um, I might, uh, might go over to Mike's page and show you what he's building because it's phenomenal. That finish is just incroyable. And Jet says, unlike metal scrapers, ceramic scrapers do not corrode or rust, even when exposed to moisture. This property makes them suitable uh, for use in wet environments or with corrosive materials. Um, um, dun, dun, dun. And they also say ceramic scrapers are typically more durable than plastic or metal scrapers. They are resistant to wear and tear, making them long-lasting for various scraping tasks. Yep, as, uh, but as Drew said to me, they, they can be, but they can also be a little bit on the fragile side. So um, treat them with care, folks. Um, right, that's another that's another sprue gone. What are we up to here? We're on to step two, um, uh, B5. Let's hold the sprue up the right way, shall we? Um, oh, B5 and B6. I think they are part of the landing gear. Um, no, they're not. I think they're... I don't know what they are, folks. Actually, let me just have a quick look at the instructions. So those, they go forward like so. Okay, just seeing how much I need to clean up and do I need to clean up. But I'll tell you what, we'll zoom in a bit for this. Oh, let's get it on camera, for God's sake, man.
just trying to work out whether these are part of the part of the landing pads or not. Um, I can't. I think they are. I think. I think if that's the case, then that's. I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll we'll fit them in place and then we'll figure out their their importance a bit later on. Yeah, I think they're part of the part of the landing pads. Um, hmm. Uh, there's another one. Uh, so B five and B six. We need to zoom out a bit. I think we're on the limit of the camera focus there. Sorry about that. So what we'll do is we'll do some um, we'll do some more work on this one. Then I'll show you the other two Dune kits and. I was rather disappointed that um, the sequel is called Dune Part 2, and they didn't call it Terry and Dune, but there we go. Um, Sure, those are landing. Yeah, I think they are part of the the undercarriage. So so B three, you sank my battleship. B three goes. So like these instructions are so small, um, especially with somebody like me with who's short sighted. I'm just having a look. B3 and B8. OK. Oh, there they are. I can see them. So B3. Uh, it's all right. Bear, bear with, folks. I'm just trying. To, oh, right. Yeah. B3, B3 and B8. B3 and B4 lock into the side of B8. Um, oh, I see what I've done, folks. Right, okay. This, this, right. Classic, classic example here of not paying attention to the instructions because, see, it says there, flying option, and the B, the two bits I've just cleaned up, B5 and B6, are the landing gear in the flying option. Whereas part step four is um, is in the ground parked option. So I actually, oh, see, it wasn't paying attention. Too busy nattering away here. So we'll gently prise those bits off the kit. What did you do on Tuesday night? Watched a confused man for day. He really was confused that night. Um, so let's start again, shall we? Um, okay, right. We don't need uh, we don't need part. Right, okay. We don't need these bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the stuff that I don't need. So B8 that can go. and uh, B3 and B4. So there they are there. So, oh my goodness me, that that is, there is minimal room to get in there to cut them, but this sort of demonstrates why um, single edge nippers are such fabulous tools to work with. So there we go. Um, right, okay, so we need... 
B11 and B12. Oh, we'll get there in the end, folks. So B11, that side. Right. I would have been making models 50 years, you know. Oh, right. I'm not going to worry about cleaning up the seam there because that's going to be sat on the ground. So, whoops, Daisy. We will scrape that seam off the top. See, I've, I've fallen in love with my seam scraper. That's all I'm going to do tonight is uh, scrape seams. Don't know why I just did I just did the underside of the pads because because I just did um I wanted to make sure they were smooth enough so that it would sit a bit better. Um oh. come on man. There we go. That's better. That's more like it. So B12. Actually, I'm just I'm just gonna just for the next couple of bits, I'm gonna use the dual edge nippers to show you the difference in the cut that you get. Because see, these are the dual edge ones, but they work by bringing the blade together and actually squeezing and and kind of you know doing it that way. So. Egg on face. These are absolutely fabulous. Um, oh my goodness me! I was expecting them to. I was expecting them to actually pinch and and fracture. Uh, a bit like the single edge ones, they absolutely slice through things. So, oh my goodness me! Let's go and get a um, go and get a damp flannel to get the egg off the man from Dudley's face because I was expecting a completely different experience then, and that's why I do it live, folks. Because if I if I foul up, I can hold my hands up and say hands up and say, "Yep, I wasn't expecting that." Oops. And these kind of, they splay out like that. So I've glued this, the, the right ones there, haven't I? B, B, yeah, B5 and B6. Yeah, yeah, those are the right ones. See, look, it's starting to come together now. Look, it's it's... Yes, like that. So let's do the uh, center section, which is B1, B9, and B2. And we'll get these bits done, and then we'll probably put some of the uh, some of the uh, blades on, and then uh, then we'll call it uh, call it a night, quite frankly. And we'll have a look at the other two models as well. So, so these are the dual edge dual edge nippers um it's all right i'm slightly confused there's a new story Actually, whilst we're whilst we're on the underside there, I'm just going to go in there and get rid of those sprue leftovers. So that goes 
in there like so. Right, okay, so we'll again... He's ceramic scraper mad, this guy. It's usually one of the most tedious jobs I can think of when it comes to doing cleanup on a model. Just having a, a brand new tool. Um, honest to goodness, it's starting to become my favorite, <laughs> my favorite bit of a modeling project, this. Um, Now, the one thing I will say about these Meng kits is, as far as I can tell, um, there are no, I can't find any kind of painting instructions in, oh, uh, well, hang about, he says that, what's this? No, that's decals, that's decals. Um, perhaps I need to have a look at the, um, the QR codes, perhaps they've got some painting instructions on the website, but yeah, I can't see anything here. Perhaps they're not meant to be painted. So, so if I've faux pas there, somebody please correct me. Um, Bit of a mold part line down there that I'm not massively happy with. Oh, I'm about that's on the underside. Oh, Why am I putting all that effort into that? That's the side that's going to be seen. Yeah, there we go. Tell you what, is seam scraping with these ceramic tools certainly leaves the surface much smoother. They're not, it's weird, they, they, they do the job, but I don't think they're quite as aggressive as, um, as metal ones. So I'm just gonna go in there and take that down a bit more. Scrape, level that off a bit more, I think. Now we do have a bit of a sink little bit of a sink mark you can just see it there in the uh, in the image oh, normally i'd fill that perhaps i will perhaps i will not tonight but in in the fullness of time i will fill that because it might be a little bit visible 
If you've noticed thus far, folks, we haven't used any glue. Um, and I do believe this was Meng's intention, but um, oh, it's just it's ever so annoying that it's still not quite still not quite as level as I want it to be. So I'm just going to add it a bit more. <laughs> That's better. That's better. Just a dab of primer on that, but that'll be fine. Um, okay, so that locates under there like so. So so we've got some little bits that need to go either side, which are uh, one and two. So let's have a look. B1 and B2. B1 and B2. Right, there we go. So again, I'm using the, the, the double, double bladed ones, double cutting edges. Um, dual edge nippers, that's the, the correct term. But I've got to say, these are absolutely stunning. Um, I'm just having a re quick read. Um, Jim Aldercott says, I believe, I believe Patrick Stewart was in the 1984 film. He was, he was. Gunnar Halley he played. Um, we do like Sir Pat. I saw him in a production of Ibsen's was it the Dollhouse or the Master Builder? I think it was the Master Builder at the Bath Theatre Royal in 2003, which was 21 years ago. It was very good. Sue Johnson from Brookside was in it as well. Um, there we go. A little bit of culture for you folks. I do like a bit of Ibsen. I was in the school production of Ghosts, um, uh, which is a, um, yeah, that's an interesting play. I played Jakob Engstrand. Um, Mad Sea Captain, which was rather um, disappointing, given that the year before I played Captain Cat in the school production of Under Milk Wood, also a Mad Sea Captain. I'm beginning to think I was getting typecast here. So, um... oh, we do like Dylan Thomas in this household. Right. I think we can. What did you do on Tuesday night? Watch the Confused Man from Dudley. It was supposed to be about modelling, but he started banging on about Dylan Thomas. Um, hang about, let's get this. Oh, we're going to have to use another tool, and it's a pair of tweezers, because we just need to. Oops. Bring those two bits together. Yep, there we go. Anybody who's ever attended uh, one of the modelling demos that I do at um, shows will know that we, we do tend to go a little bit around the houses in terms of the conversation. So um, apologies that it's not all to do with modelling, but that's, you know me, you've been watching this show long enough. So um Jet says, I played a victim in a school production of The Good Samaritan. Hmm. 
See, nearly reached for my Swan Morton scalpel blade to do some scene scraping there and um, corrected myself. Oh, incidentally, for, oh, we've already done that. Um, I was going to say, I was going to get you all to wish me mum happy birthday again, but you did that Sunday. So, and she read the comments today. So, happy birthday, mum. And um, I look forward to the, um, look forward to eating some of the cake that I bought today. So, carrot cake and Victoria sponge. Lovely. Um, yeah, thank you everybody on Sunday that wished, wished her a happy birthday. It was very kind of you all. So um, she enjoyed reading the comments today. So, right, that's... Right, that'll do. It's a fabulously busy little model, isn't it? For, for, the, for being such a tiny little scale. But... There we go. I am loving the fact that everything just push fits in at the moment. And da -da, she sits. No, no need to worry about tail um, tail draggers on this one. So we're gonna we're gonna head towards a conclusion here in a minute, folks. We've almost finished building this thing. Um, I'm just having a look. So we're doing this one in flight. Oh, you can actually rotate the wings. That's clever. Um, okay. So I've just got to see, we've got to put parts B10 in. And parts B10 are all these. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, they're like ball socket joints. So they, you push them in, push them in there. Right, okay. So according to this you put the put the, the joints in first of all so right okay we'll do that i'm just gonna read the comments um so cheers me dears mm. um uh jet says imagine if it was as big as the mandalorian ship I think the 72nd scale one is actually, and I'm just going to bring this up. There we go. The Meng are doing, um, this is from Coltman, so sorry about that, Coltman. Um, but uh, there you go, order at the Coltman TV shop. Um, uh, but Meng are doing a 72nd scale ornithopter, so um, there we go. Um, Now, how OCD are we going to be about cleaning up these uh, these little bits here? Um, you know me, folks. I'm going to be massively OCD. So what we're going to do is we'll... I think we'll do three or four at a time. So... Oops. So these effectively push in there, I think. Can't tell how firmly. Oh, thing is, I don't want to go. I don't want to go in too firm in case I knacker something down there. But. I can't tell whether they're supposed to go in there and whether they then kind of like pop. Oh, okay, they just... Goodness me, these instructions are not good for people like me who've got, um, who are a bit short-sighted. So, what I can tell, you've got to... You've got to place them in that way up. So most of the most of it is sitting down, and then there's the gap at the top for you to um, put the blade on, really. So it 
Do you know, right, okay, policy decision here. It's so fragile, a little bit of force is needed to get these get these in place. So I think it's best just to take the um, take the undercarriage off for now so that you can get in there with these. Okay. This is starting to feel like a really delicate little model now. Um, and we have three to go on that side. Uh, one thing I didn't do was, oops, the gouge is that one there. Didn't do any clean up on the on these bits, so I think I might, I might this time is just give them a little bit of a swipe with the sanding sponge. Um, Oops. Dong. Okay, so that's that's essentially that. So um that's we've we've ended up with two spare number tens, but I'm just having a look on the instructions to see. We've only got six wings or six blades. Um, perhaps they're spare. Perhaps it explains it on the instructions that they're spares, but we won't get rid of them for now. So we're going to add some of the blades and Oh, I see why this is. Um, I think they these are common bits with so the house art the house Atreides ornithopter actually has eight wings, um, whereas the Harkonnen ones only have three. So I think these are we we'll, we'll find out in a minute. I think these are all we'll find out now. Actually, I think these are common parts. Yes, they are. The bodies, the bodies are different, but the wing parts are pretty much the same. Um, yep, they are. So that explains it. So let's have a look. You can all go and have your tea in a minute, folks. I will. I will wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, I will wrap this up very, very quickly. But me being. Me being me, I am absolutely uh, stubborn about getting as much as I can done tonight. So um, I essentially want you to see a complete, a completely constructed model. Um, oh my goodness me, this is so delicate.
Oops. I am just going to give it a quick swipe there and there as well. And of course, the great thing about this is that when the models have all been finished and painted and weathered and are effectively done, means I get another trip down to Glastonbury, which is excellent. So um, always a lovely place to visit. And one of my favourite places really is. So so these are parts C1. So they just slot in apparently they just slot in there like so oops oh no no right rookie error there folks that's actually the bits i've just um the bits I've just removed are actually for parts, uh, they're parts D, they go on the other side. So, goodness me. We just, just pull these, uh, pull these out, swap them over. In fact, I'm just having a think here, always a dangerous thing, um, is I actually, I, I actually believe that it's probably better to kind of, I don't know, put, put the blades onto the, onto the pivots before. I'm um, not entirely sure about that. Actually, I'm just going to go in there and a little bit more of a clean up on that. Might use these tweezers actually, because these are a little bit blunter. fabulous design of um you know the actual product design of this kit um it's yeah look at that that's, that's i can see why the 70 second scale version of this is going to be quite um it's going to be quite substantial actually but we're what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to get these last blades on then we're going to pop the um pop the uh, undercarriage back on and then we'll have a look at the other dune kits here and uh, and then you can go and have your supper i know i do um I tell you what, Meng have they have some really quite delicate uh, sprue attachment points on this kit as well. Very commendable. Um, I remember uh, when Meng attended Telford back in 2012, 2012, and I bought I think it was the Hilux um, pickup truck that they do. Um, I think it's st still in here on the shelf of doom. Um, uh, I painted it. I started weathering it, but for some reason, I, I just ran out of enthusiasm. But beautiful kit. Um, mo modeler starts model fails to finish shocker. There we go. Um, but 
but I've got some of their other bits and pieces that they do, including their diorama stuff, the kind of construction bollards and things like that. Um, but the, the ladies and gents who came over from China to visit Telford that year, absolutely, you know, lovely, really patient, uh, enthusiastic about the, the company and the hobby. Um, I just wish they'd come back. Oops, Daisy. I think we need to get this one in place first of all. This is the other thing I was going to wonder is, is it better to actually build these, you know, actually attach these together and then put them in place or not because the thing is they they will pivot a bit so um actually the other thing is look how thin these parts are it's just phenomenal molding by meng it's yeah absolutely stellar stuff Bum, 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 bum. Right, okay. Um, we are rapidly approaching that point now where we've only got a couple of bits left to go on there. And one of them is uh, it's to pop it on the stand, but we're not going to pop it on the stand. We are going to have it au naturel. Now, have I got those the right way round? Yes, I have. They splay outwards. Oops. And that essentially is that. Um, because because these are all uh, obstacles on ball socket joints. Yes, you can you can change their position. So um, I was going to say with the with the House Harkonnen one, I'm gonna I'm gonna have this in the most ugly mode imaginable. Um, because it just it just lends to the characters in the film, really. But um, so I'm trying to work out whether these whether these are supposed to pivot. Yeah, they are supposed to pivot on the. Uh, there's so much pivoting going on here. Whoops, Daisy. But yeah, there we go. Um, we will take a picture of that a bit later on. What a fabulous design, though. Really. Um, oh, brilliant. I'm having fun, folks. I don't know about you lot, but I'm having a ball at the moment. So shall we um, have a look at some of the other ones? So what we've got here is we've got the House Atreides Ornithopter. And so that's just reaching for his craft blade. So what's different? The blades are the same. Um, undercarriage bits are the same. The stand is the same. 
So I think the only thing that is substantially different is the uh, cockpit area uh, and the fact that the uh, House Atreides ones have four wings per uh, per vehicle, whereas the um, Harkonnen ones only have three. So, um, but yeah, so there we go. That's that's that one. Again, beautiful side moulding by Meng. Really um, fabulous stuff. So uh, we will um, build this one as well, and we'll catalogue that. Oops, Daisy, on the channel on the Facebook page as well. And we'll have a quick look at the Spice Harvester. Now this, whereas these two are phenomenally uh, delicate models, this looks to be quite substantial. Um, uh, hello, John Huston. He says, soggy here in London. Um, Bone dry here in Somerset, so oh, no, that's just oh, this does look so. I have a little decal sheet there with um. I'm trying to think. We'll find out. We'll find out on the instructions what that's for. Uh, incidentally, on the um, on the ornithopters, you do get uh, a decal sheet for the glass areas as well. So, um, so this is the spice harvester, and oh, goodness, we're running out running out of desk space here. So let's have a look, shall we? Um, so that's the construction. Now this doesn't look this doesn't look to be fabulously complex, does it? Um, where's that marking go? Um, oh, there we go. It goes just there. So and that's more gubbins there. Mold quality is absolutely stunning. It really is. Um, like I say, they don't really kind of give you any painting instructions, but uh, I think that's... Um, <laughs> I'm just going to zoom in on this. I will take some photographs and put up... Um, put some photographs on the Facebook feed, but oh my goodness me, that's like classic Greebliss, that is. Um, almost Star Destroyer bridge, isn't it? Um, yeah, we'll take some pictures of this and the Atreides and uh, pop that up on, uh, on the social media feeds. But I do love a change of pace, folks. I really do. And this is a fabulous change of pace. It really is. So I think it's time we all have some supper. Um, supper's ready. Which, uh, for those of you who know, is an awesome song. Um, but we are going to be busy the next few nights, which is exactly what we like. So, again, um, uh, Mike Williams says, um, uh, he says, what scale are these, John? No scale mentioned, Mike. I think they're just kind of like a, a loose fix, fit, fit the box scale. Derp's come in, by the way. And Andy, Andy, I'm glad you mentioned this. Andy King says, shades of a Jawa sand crawler. I was just thinking that that really like i say the ones from the david lynch film are are actually they've got kind of big wheels they've got big ball wheels and they've they're kind of like they almost look they almost look like giant insects yep yeah, star wars sand crawler um 
So, um, as always, um, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody in Jadlam down down there in Glastonbury um, for giving giving us the chance to build these. And um, yeah, this 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 is exactly the kind of change of pace we're always talking about and saying to people: just try something different. Get out of your comfort zone, folks, and try something you wouldn't normally do. Um, I'm my brain, what's left of it, is already kind of racing at the thought of how I'm gonna how I'm gonna weather that. Um, got some ideas, and I've got some ideas to try something out that's really kind of just not something I need or usually do. But we'll talk about that. Well, perhaps we'll do a live on that. But there we go. There is the House Arconan Ornithopter, which even for a little model, still that's still a substantial kind of um, footprint. But what a fabulous design. Um, much nicer than the ones in the David Lynch film. So on that note, just going to finish off my barley cup. Mm. On that note, I uh, just want to say a big uh, thank you to Jad Lamb for sending the kit. Also to uh, the Scale Modeler Supply in Australia for the uh, for the nippers as well. That's um, that was absolutely brilliant of them. Um, scale model or scale the scale model? Yeah, Scale Modeler Supply. Get the name right. Um, uh, so a big thanks to them and also. Premium Hobbies, just up the road in Western Supermare, for the um, the beautiful uh, thing they, they sent us of all the sanding sponges and things. So um, absolutely stellar. And, of course, what did we not use tonight? We didn't use any glue. There we go. Um, on that note, folks, uh, just to say thank you for watching. Bless your, bless your hearts. I really do. And um, I will leave you to your evening. And um, I'm going to have some food, actually. And Derp's giving me the uh, the eye as well here. So um, hopefully we'll be back on um, back on Sunday with the Sunday service. Keep an eye out on the social media feed because I will be updating photographs, not only of the Harkonnen one we've built, but also... Um, kind of like beauty shots of the sprues and everything for the Spice Harvester and the Atreides Ornithopter as well. And that's it. That's 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 all I can think of tonight. Um, everybody stay safe, enjoy your modelling, and we will see you very, very soon. So until the next time, take care. Bye for now. <laughs>